This is the, whoops, wrong agenda. Um, sorry about that. Okay, this is the Monday, November 1st, 2021 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. And pursuant to the act extending certain COVID measures adopted during the state of emergency, this meeting will be held using remote participation. Um, and as everybody knows, the uh, meeting is um, being recorded by video. And we'll begin the um, meeting with public comment. If there is any public comment uh, regarding anything that's not already on the agenda. And I don't see any participants who are here from the public, so we'll move on. Um, there is no chair's report at this um, interim meeting. We do have a set of minutes that Sarah sent around today. I realize this came in late um, and I apologize. I was at a meeting this afternoon. So um, if folks had a chance to review this, we certainly could review and approve them. If you want another, if you want to hold on to them until the uh, November meeting, we could also do that as well. I've read them and I'm happy to, to move approval. Okay. Anybody else have reservations doing that? Okay. I haven't read them, but I'm prepared to. <laughs> Now to other people's superior judgments. Okay. So they, they did seem accurate to me, so I would second that motion to approve okay, them. Okay, great. No discussion? All right. Sarah, let's vote. Martha? Yes. Steve? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Craig? Yes. Ann Harvey? I say I, I'm taking this on faith, but yes. <laughs> All right, unanimously. Great. All right, um, well, as you, as you all know, the purpose of this meeting, this interim meeting is to um, hold a continuation of the request for the local historic district certificate of appropriateness um, for um, the project at 354 Elm Street. And uh, the map ID numbers are 31A-001 and 23C-043. Um, and I believe, um, just to rec rec recap from the last meeting, um, we had discussed this application and had agreed to issue a partial um, certificate of the program for two elements of it. One was the removal of the uh, crescent-shaped uh, hatch shell or crash structure that sits on the property lawn, the south side of the property. And the other was to approve the basement window, um, the basement window alterations replacements. Um, but what we have before us today um, is a re-examination of the windows, door, doors, and roof. And I believe Mr. Tuttle is here um, again, I hope. And is um, we, we did receive your information again, Mr. Tuttle, this afternoon. Um, I have not had a chance to read it in detail. Um, so I'm hoping that you can make a presentation to us because it was a little short notice. Yes, and, and I do apologize for that. I, I've spent uh, some of my weekend <laughs> doing some of the, the uh, follow up on, on the week's activity, going back out on the site and examining some of these elements. Um, I would like to start with the doors. And the, the reason that I am approaching that is that the doors you know, I don't want to portray this as an interim solution, but uh, a remedial solution to just getting the, the building in uh, full usage again. Uh, the current doors, and, and I'll just really paraphrase what I uh, described here, is that the last reference to the original doors was back in 1972. Um, after that, there was no reference to the uh, original doors or the wood doors. Uh, I can only surmise that, uh, you know, following that date, these doors were changed. Uh, we did find a small framed placard within the building, and I have that photograph and I'll share it with the commission um, I can I can send it in at another time of several households that made donations towards doors, but there is no clarification as to what doors or the year. It's just simply uh, acknowledging uh, monies donated for doors. And the only doors that seem to have changed there 
are those exterior doors. So I'm just guessing on that. Um, the, the current doors are, as previously discussed, just a single uh, thickness of aluminum, and that is very uh, readily con a conductor of, of temperature. And last winter, uh, the observed condition was that the interior face of the doors were covered with frost. Uh, that is because of high moisture content within the building in the basement. We've uh, mitigated some of the moisture uh, within the building, so hopefully that doesn't occur again, but they are not thermally sound uh, closures for the building. The applicant wishes to change those doors out and put in a predominantly glazed leaf still a paired leaf as the original doors and as a, these current doors, but predominantly glazed, and that you would then have a view of the interior set of doors, which are still original to the church and are wood doors, but they are not, the exterior doors are not uh, at this time being considered being replaced in wood, but where the sort of interim situation is, this is this is purely driven by a cost measure and the hope or the desires of the commission would be uh, reflected in if there is a possibility of changing those doors at a later point the congregation certainly would take that into consideration the last meeting there seemed to be a debate on not having a strong feeling from the commission on the rear handicapped access uh, doorway that that could be changed. And then it was the debate was really centered on the two tower doors, one facing directly Elm Street and the other one facing the downtown approach to the church. And, you know, we, we would like to pursue changing the doors. Uh, again, the, the original doors, there is no evidence of those doors there. The use of the aluminum doors can at a future point be changed back to a solid door if, it, if a restoration approach is being developed for the building. Right now, this is more of a uh, remediation and to reclaim the building for active use, active and safe use. And so the congregation would seek that sort of approach. That's on the doors. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you want me to present each of the three topics and then open it to discussion or- Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I appreciate the additional detail, but are you proposing anything different from what you proposed at our last meeting? Uh, not not uh, different than the last meeting. Uh, okay. Although the last meeting, there was some discussion of a consideration of a wood door on one of the two tower faces. And that has been presented to the church. They have yet to respond to that. Okay, thank you. Yep. And I, I have a question also. You mentioned that the, there's another set of doors inside the exterior ones that are wood. Yes. You don't, but do you have a picture of those or how far away um, are they? They they are in both cases about, uh, I'm gonna say about six feet away. There is, a, uh, there is an interior set of four stairs and then these doors. Mm. So it's to bring you up to the level of the sanctuary floor. Mm. Right. So if you had mostly glazed doors, you, it doesn't sound like you could really see those interior doors, say from uh, the street, or, or, or how visible it, would they be? Well, they would be visible because of just lighting in the airlock. So there would be light on those doors. But would they be a focus of the, of the doors? No, they would not. They would um, be. Do, 
Do those interior drawers resemble uh, the drawing that you showed us that Sarah just had up on the screen? No, they are more of an interior paneled door, but they are of wood. Okay. It's just that the drawing um, is different from what is actually was actually built, or maybe there was an alteration done. There were some exterior steps on the front of the building. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Not... So at some point, there was a a ramping or that was a site condition that, that mm -hmm. was imposed so that on the Elm Street approach, there are no stairs any longer. They slope the, the sidewalk. On the town facing door, those stairs do exist and you okay. can go up those stairs. Yep. All right. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Tuttle, why don't you go on um, and present the other and then we'll discuss them as a group. Okay. Thank um, you. The next one that I would uh, present would be the sanctuary windows. And that's predominantly, I'm going to sort of say I'm, I'm doing a sequence of things that are most readily revised and those and moving up to more complex installations. And while the stained glass is more complicated, it certainly is something that could be viewed in a very similar fashion to the doors in that an interim step is being advised. And the advised change because of, we've examined now and cataloged each of the windows uh, within the sanctuary. And the representative pictures here show some displacement of glass, broken glass, and failure of the caming to contain glass. Uh, in the center picture at the bottom of the screen is the intrusion of the aluminum window that was cut into the stained glass. So it actually the little half circles at the top of that frame were supposed to be full circles, full rounds, but the aluminum window that was cut in at some point severed those. So to bring that back would be fully a restoration of the glass window. Uh, right now, that is well outside the budgets of the church, the, the financial capabilities. But the interest of preserving the glass or, or cleaning it and, and doing maintenance on it also is something that under some of the spreadsheets, we were hopeful of minimal address of those windows. But on closer examination, the exterior of the windows are producing much more accelerated deterioration than anticipated. And that is because there was at some subsequent point uh, there was a storm panel in, uh, installed on the face of the exterior. And that is shown in the last picture on the second page of this document uh, that is subdividing the stained glass panel. And the horizontal bars are of a much more contemporary date than the original windows and have been failing since probably soon after their installation and all the caulking and so forth are, is falling out of that. But while on site, we were able to register temperature fluctuation when the sun hits the, the storm panel the heat generated in the cavity between the storm glass, the, st the stained glass and the storm panel is noticeable and softens the caming that is the integrity of holding the stained glass together. So there is some deterioration that or stresses being exerted on the poor quality of the storm panel that's been applied to these openings. But if so, I'm hearing you correctly, if I'm yeah. hearing you correctly, despite the cost, you are proposing some action that you weren't proposing at our last meeting. 
Correct. What okay. what we what yeah. we would be what we we would be attempting to do at this time is a proper removal of the stained glass and crating of the stained glass because there is no restoration money in hand. The okay. monies that would be utilized would be to put an insulated glass storm in the place of the, of the stained glass at this juncture, the frame of which would be able to receive the return of stained glass at a future date. Of we unfortunately, I can't determine that from the costs uh, and the and the the financial wherewithal of the congregation. But yeah, thank they, you. they would not be just discarded. But that would be the intent at this time. And and just to clarify, um, is. Are, are all of the windows in this condition or is it just a couple of them or? The, the windows uh, along the sanctuary are, are generally all of the same uh, condition. Mm -hmm. There are isolated <clears throat> windows, stained glass windows that are more uh, surrounds of uh, masonry and not the, the decorative wood trim or tracery. And those, because they were small and isolated, did not receive the external storm windows. And although they're not energy efficient, they are in much better shape. And we would address those in a different fashion so that those would not necessarily be removed, although they should be cleaned. Every All of the windows are just poorly maintained. And so it, an attempt to clean them in place would be the approach taken on those windows. So can you just tell us exactly like how many will be cleaned and how many would have the glass removed? The- um, What's the total number? Um, yeah, the uh, and I didn't print that sheet myself. Um, at the- Predominantly at the small office area that is in the rear, there are a number of these small windows. There are also some small windows up at the tower area that are not uh, adversely affected. Uh, I would say that there's probably not over um, five or six of these windows because most of the windows associated with the sanctuary are uh, are in the condition that, that I previously stated. And I, can, I knew the shortness of time, but I would be more than happy to send to Sarah the plan with the documentation and so forth. It was just too lengthy to hope to get out to the commission today. But we could, we could give you a full catalog count on those windows and the conditions of each of the windows, we, we did a, a brief summary on each of those conditions. Um, I'm not trying to be evasive of that, but it, it was more substantial than we had hoped. Some of the storm window panels were actually cut in and disfigured some of the original wood tracery mm -hmm. on the openings because they were Mm, hopeful of cutting the pattern, but uh, certainly weren't going to take the glass down to do further adjustments of it. They instead just gouged out the wood to, to just get it to seat properly and then caulk it in. And so the removal of the existing storm windows, I think, would far exceed you know, and, and benefit the openings because there could be some work done to do repair to the, the wood tracery. And we do, as pointed out in the meeting previously, we have to do some sill replacement of the wood outside as a matter of course. They had covered that with sheet metal and it, that accelerated the moisture penetration and rot of that material. So- okay. That would that necessitates too the the safe removal or the purposeful removal of the stained glass because if we just start trying to cut away the wood sill support to that window, 
I think some of the vulnerability of the stained glass window would be accelerated even further. Okay. Um, all right, and, send, and we have the discussion about the roof. Yes. In the, in the roof, I, I've discussed this with the parishioner who is looking to donate the material. It is his line of work to do metal roofing. Uh, that is, you know, what he what he is committed to doing for the church. Uh, I've done some research on the pros and cons of of asphalt shingles and metal roofing, and and I think that it's it's common knowledge that the metal roofing has a much greater life cycle than the asphalt shingles. The Asphalt shingles are also a small unit size material. So every joint has a potential of, uh, a potential of leaking. Uh, it also means that the labor to cover a roof of this expanse and, and in these configurations is, is a pretty treacherous job versus a crane providing uh, installation of a sheet that in some cases could be done in one or two sections from ridge to eave. So, you know, th there's a bit of uh, clean execution with the, the metal. I did, and, and I hope to indulge the commission slightly, but I'm not going to labor the point that the original sketch that we did uncover uh, by, the, by the architect's hand indicated a verdigree material that with some of the graphics provided would indicate a sheet metal or a sheet material uh, transitioning from the spire to the, the roof of the tower. That would be an indication of uh, artistic license of saying this would be great if it was a oxidized copper roof. Mm -hmm. I would assume that the budget for the project even then would not tolerate a copper roof. And so the alternative was to stay within budget and a shingle roof was provided in its uh, sub as a substitution. And the word shingle was just written across the uh, this drawing. I can't prove that, but graphically there was so much detail put into the other materials on the building that this is an assumption that I was taking. The other concern that was voiced was the, uh, the work around the dormers. And that is the next, scroll down slightly is the next picture that I took and the current dormers are in fact, the roof portion of the dormer is a weathered copper or sheet metal. So we are in, in fact, utilizing a family uh, material, although it is an accent in this application, but we are doing something that is compatible with that and the proposal is to retain the gable face, the, the stained glass window and the wood trim, the ornate wood trim in these applications. What you see in front of you though is a small border trim that is the channel holding the storm panel that was installed there on the dormer. This is doing the same problem that mm -hmm the downstairs sanctuary windows are experiencing. And it, it's compounded by there is no flashing that runs out onto the roof surface in front of that so that the, the roofing is cut to that so that any weather hitting that would actually run down behind the shingles and could be one of the several causes of moisture infiltrating and causing issues on the ceiling of the, of the church. So, you know, certainly we're, there's a consensus that a new roof has to be installed, flashings have to be 
uh, maintained and, and improved upon. And it is the hope that the parishioner that is willing to make the substantial donation of the material is not a huge departure or something that would create a unattractive building. And if scroll down or go to the next page of this, you would see a graphic rendering of the building with the proposed roof. Just a question, how, how well does this proposed material match that weather copper in the dormer? Um, there, it is not a perfect match because of just exposure. In fact, some of the faces of the dormer are different on the west side. Of course. North than the west side, south and east. Mm -hmm. So, so it is an approximation and, and it's not an attempt to technically match it, but it would not be offensive. It would not draw more attention to one material or the other. I mean, is it possible to match the dormer color? I know you're saying there it's different in different places. Well, um, what, what might be possible, and again, it would be um, a discussion certainly with, <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, fabricator and installer that they could use some of the new material over the existing material. It would not be removed, but it would be in the same form and profile, but be covered in the, the new material so that it would be a, a complete match. Well, it's not so much that. I think it's, I'm more interested to see whether, um, I think the original material, if it's still intact on the stormer should be retained and, and displayed. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering if the roof material, you know, um, is, we, is as there, close a match as possible. Yeah, there, there were some uh, printed cards and I always caution never to, mm -hmm. to judge by the printed card. Uh, there were some variations for weathered material uh, and we can certainly investigate that further. Okay. But I think that the, the goal here is that the parishioner is willing to make the substantial donation for a long life cycle material, much longer than an asphalt shingle. And because of its cost and durability is a, a better investment for a continuation of the building being less prone to problems, at least as far as the roof goes. And it is a significant thing and, and that's the why it was the last thing presented is that it is more of a commitment than even some of the window changes and certainly the door changes uh, mm -hmm. that are being uh, discussed mm -hmm. because it is such a costly and uh, labor intensive process uh, to execute. Yeah, and also uh, obviously an important feature yeah. <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, well, I th thank you very much for updating us on your thinking and your proposals. And I just would want to, uh, um, first of all, open up into general questions. And then I think what we should do is take each one of these individually. Does any, any commissioners have comments or questions for Mr. Tuttle? Actually, I do have two. Um, mm -hmm. One specifically just on the roof. So Mr. Tuttle, I, it sounds to me like what you're saying is the parishioner is making this donation. He, he actually works in metal roofs and he does not work in asphalt roofs or he's not prepared for whatever reason to do an asphalt roof in this case. Is that accurate? Uh, that is correct. He is, he is a, um, in the industry and he installs, fabricates uh, sheet metal products and does metal roofing. Uh, he, at one point, because of the necessity to do the roof, he said, if, if no options are, are offered uh, or acceptable, that a shingle roof, he would, he would do his best effort to that, but he thought it was an unwise investment on the part of the church to purchase that. He can't, he can't provide the material as a donation. That would be a purchase. And so 
uh, that in the labor installation would become problematic for the church. And it is a necessity. In fact, it's presently holding up some of the interior work because the roof continues to leak. Mm -hmm. So okay. they, they, um, they know that the roof has to be done. He is just uncomfortable with a commitment to something that he knows is a lesser end product. And then the other thing I would be interested to know, and it's just in, in ballpark terms, assuming you don't have more specific, what is the difference in cost between, you know, the, the wooden door, the door you're proposing? I mean, between the different things that, that are on the table, it, it, including it, the roof. Yeah, the the uh, the door is probably two and a half to three times uh, more expensive to do in wood than it is to do the aluminum. The uh, the roof, the material cost is probably uh, the material cost alone is two and a half times uh, to go from asphalt to metal. The labor to, to put that in, in in this application, the labor increases with the asphalt for, because of the small unit coverage for each piece that has to be affixed to the roof versus the metal, which is a faster installation. So you, you, you start to almost equate the same that the metal roof is still a slight increase probably more along the lines of an installed metal roof in this application is probably only two times the asphalt cost. And that's predominantly because when you get to the steeple, that's some intricate work that at least this person is an experienced individual and, and feels he can do that effectively. I have another question about the roof and that I know that uh, that this um, sort of you know big pieces of standing seam roof is one option for a metal roof, but metal roofs are also made to look shingled. And I don't know whether that's something that would be preferable to the historical commission. Um, and so, but it's not individual shingles or it's, um, it's a, you know, maybe a piece that has five or six of them that get laid more like an asphalt roof, but mm -hmm. it's not individual ones. and. Um, particularly, and, you know, they can be quite nice looking. And in some ways, because there's some articulation there, it, it's, it, it's not these um, smooth, large expanses of metal, but metal that's broken up that would have some shadow to it because of the um, looking like shingles. Um, and, and I don't know if this person works with that as well, or whether you've all looked at that material. Uh, we, we have looked at that to some degree. The uh, individual who is in the industry uh, sort of frowns upon that because the finish of that, because of the very features that you point out that give it some visual character, also create wear that is accelerated so that you end up with something that doesn't have the longevity that you would with the more simplistic sheet form. And, uh, and what, what, yep, go ahead. I'm sorry, what's the estimated, estimate, estimated life for the smooth sheet metal or the metal roof? The, the warranties years? that are on that are anywhere from 40 to 50 years. The, uh, the asphalt shingle at some of the highest grade shingles is perhaps 30 years. This application, because of the steep slope, they would probably be around 25 years, even at the most, uh, uh, the, the highest quality of the asphalt roofing. The roofing that is on there, I would say is sort of middle of the road and is, is neared or exceeded its life expectancy at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised at your estimate for asphalt roofing, because I've never heard it given a 30 year life. Whereas the, um, I happen to have this metal, the shingled metal on my roof, and I was told 30 or 35 years for my roof with, with the shingles. Yeah, and that, that would be 
consistent with what I was saying that the shingle, because of the uh, the edges that are there, because of how it is formed or pressed and then finished, wear more rapidly. So that is why that you would be less than that 40 to 50 years. And the 35 years on the shingle, that's that's what the 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 reps all promise everybody, but I don't think that that ever happens on the asphalt. Other questions? Jonathan, Steve, Craig? I'm ready to vote. Okay, anybody else? Um, all right, so let's take this one at a time. Um, so remember we did already issue or approve in a certificate for these two other elements last time. So let's start with the doors. Um, does someone want to make a motion on that? I, I do. Two. Oh, to move, uh, to vote approval. Okay, any second Thank discussion? You. Okay, Sarah will vote. Right. And just to be clear, this is a certificate of appropriateness for the doors only. Yes. Yes. But that's my understanding. Yes. Right. Martha? Can I go last? Okay. Uh, Steve? Yes. Barbara? Barbara, you're muted. Sorry, I, I did the wrong thing. I muted <laughs> instead of unmuted. No. <laughs> Jonathan? Yes. Craig? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And Martha? If you vote no, it I'm, still carries. I'm going to say I'll vote yes, but I would like to see, I know that you can't put a caveat on it, but I would like to see that an effort made to um, replace the wood, at least on those two sets of doors at some time. That would be a high priority in my opinion. And don't forget Steve. Did you, Steve, you didn't vote, did you? I did. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, you did. That's right. Okay. So that passes. Um, let's take the sanctuary windows next. Um, would someone like to make any conversation? Any, someone like to make a motion on this? I, I'll move approval as well. Okay. Second. Harvey, any discussion? I, di I just want to make sure I understand this proposal that it's for removal of the um, stained glass with replacement with, I don't know whether it was an insulated glass or but some sort of glass with the intention, you know, that, that every effort will be made to restore those windows and replace them. Can we make it a condition as opposed to just hoping that it will happen? I like that idea. And I'd like it to become a CPA project sponsored by the current owners of the church to restore the window. We can't accept applications from churches. I think for me, um, it's important to stabilize this building. And so um, one of the things I would say about the approach is that um, from my professional experience, we're not using the word restoration the way it appears in the Secretary of Interior standards. And I look at this project more as a, a preservation project that has some elements of rehabilitation. You know, rehabilitation means retaining the character defining elements and putting the building into new use. Um, and clearly a restoration is not the planned new use and it's not feasible. And, um, and that's okay, right? Rehabilitation is, is also a use that is recognized under the best practices and preservation. But I think if that's the approach to be taken, um, the retention of original material becomes quite significant. And uh, it may be that there are cases where the material is so damaged or other work that needs to be re re for repair purposes requires um, temporarily removing some elements. But I, um, but I think that there's two things. One, it has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis, right? It has to be based on the condition of places that are um, in poor condition. And I, I uh, Mr. Tuttle, I really appreciate your report and the detail that you uh, were able to provide in terms of examining 
how previous repairs um, are related to some of the deterioration that's going on. Um, this is really helpful information. So I think in, in the interest of preserving and stabilizing, um, only remove original material um, when it's necessary uh, because there's deteriorated material. And then I think if we're gonna talk, you know, the standards are very clear about windows. They say it's mandatory. Um, and I think to allow it, I would like to see something like a written statement of where, you mentioned crating, where they're going to be stored, what procedures would be in place to make sure that they could go back, and then some kind of um, way of um, monitoring that through the city staff or the planner or something like that. I, I don't think it's feasible to make a promise to do it at some unknown future date, but I think it is feasible to put in some place a very clearly written um, guidelines about how they could be safely stored and some mechanism for um, uh, for monitoring that agreement. But yeah, it, um, it, it may but, be helpful to try and put that into um, two sort of a, a time lapse condition where in a certain amount of time the applicant will provide the things that you mentioned, Steve, where you know, where they're being stored, what procedures they'll, they use to make sure that they're safe and procedures for monitoring. And then also maybe within a year, uh, a plan for either restoring them or if it's not possible to restore and reinstall what that the next treatment will be. Yeah, I mean, it certainly sounds like that the existing conditions that you describe also put the stained glass at risk, right? That they are deteriorating if we do nothing. So um, so I think some, you know, and the, the, the fear that some have that in past projects or in other projects is that you take them out and then whatever time goes by, people forget, doesn't become feasible. So um, I would be comfortable with a condition um, similar to what um, Sarah as the staff planner just articulated so that everyone's clear on what's happening. There's no promise that it has to happen, but it's clear where they are and what that someone's looking after them. I'd, I'd be happy to modify the the motion to, to incorporate these concerns. Okay, great. And, and, and I'd like to point out too, that we, we are only addressing those windows that are most vulnerable and right. that the windows that are uh, not uh, damaged or suffering as badly, and they happen to be smaller windows, but uh, we would try to clean those in place and mm -hmm. then protect those. Uh, yeah. So, you know, our, our goal is not to strip the, the building of stained glass windows. I think that the representative from the church, unfortunately, is not here, uh, could uh, echo that statement that he made the last meeting that they are not opposed to the stained glass windows. They're sometimes religious icons that are not in following closely to their teachings, but uh, most of the patterned windows are not so tied to a specific uh, iconic uh, statement. I, th I think we heard that last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, okay. I, I think that we, we could certainly provide that information. We will have to do a little bit of work to find proper uh, personnel to effectively remove those for safekeeping and, and to create those effectively. But uh, certainly we could get back to the commission with that those uh, those guidelines that we would be following. Okay, so Jonathan, do you want to amend, uh, just verbally amend your motion, please? I do. <laughs> I'll, I'll rely on someone else to get the wording right. Uh, I bet Steve could do that. Even maybe you can articulate the wording. Um, to move to approve a certificate of appropriateness for uh, the described window work on the condition that a written plan be submitted to city staff describing um, how, how the windows will be um, created, uh, where they will be stored, and some procedure for um, inspection or uh, monitoring of the agreement. Within that sounds, whatever- Sounds good to me. And 
Sarah, do you have a suggested time period for that? Do you think? Uh, it take a little bit, maybe within the next two months. Larry, does that sound reasonable? 60 days, something. I, yeah. I think that we can find the appropriate personnel to assist us with that, that would be certified for handling the uh, materials. So by okay. December 31st. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then uh, also the um, returning within one year to provide a, a reinstallation plan or alternate method if it's found infeasible. Yeah. Okay. Does someone want to second that? I would second that. Okay, Barbara. So I think, is there any more discussion? <clears throat> okay, I think we're ready to vote. All right, Martha? Yes. Steve? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Craig? Yes. And Harvey? Yes. Okay, okay great. So the final item is the roof. And uh, I think that Mr. Tuttle has been a, you know, a good job of explaining um, the complexities of this decision. Uh, would someone like to make a motion on this one? Again, I'll, I'll move approval. Okay, and the second? Harvey? Okay, discussion. Any thoughts about this? I'm I know that they need to stabilize this roof and probably replace it to enable all this other work to stop the leaks. But I'm still very uncomfortable with that big expanse of metal roof, even if it's not highly reflective. And I, I just don't know what the solution is. Okay. Anybody else? I, I guess as I see it, there's two issues. One is the character defining features and the original material. So the slope of the roof, the um, the form of the dormers. I went back and looked at the guidelines and it talks about the scale and the form of the dormers. I think maintaining the original um, proportions and again, only removing material that's damaged are one type of issue. And then the second issue is really a compatibility issue. Is the new material compatible with the, the older one? Um, and it sounds what I hear from Mr. Tuttle today that there uh, is attention to that original material and maintaining um, the sense of proportion and the scale and the form of the warmers, which really brings us down to the question of what's compatible material for this for this roof. And I think that's that's the toughest issue we have to wrestle with. Right, and also the you know the drawings that Mr. Tuttle shared with us, um, although they did share vertical. They did to a very degree, which is suggests copper. Um, it, it looks as though the original architect did not propose a shingle, and maybe the shingle was added because of cost. Anybody else have any other thoughts or questions? Hey, for me, the, the difference in the cost is a pretty compelling argument as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could. Um, um, correct me if I'm wrong about Sarah, about this, Sarah, we could issue um, a, a certificate based on hardship, financial hardship, which would basically, um, I think, <clears throat> affirm our thoughts that, you know, this isn't the ideal solution to this problem, but that we also recognize the effort this organization is making to um, restore or save this you know, historic structure that anchors the north end of our historic district, uh, which is not, as we all know, an easy thing to do um, with old churches. So I, um, I have Barbara? a question. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Barbara? Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, <laughs> um, well, <laughs> let me gather my thoughts again. I think I'd be comfortable with that. And particularly if, if, the um, the color more closely matched at least maybe the predominant color of the uh, weathered or um, dormer surrounds. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to hear what Steve has to say as well. I worry a little bit about precedent for a hardship um, exemption. I think uh, it's, I know it, it's part of the ordinance. I looked it up and read it today, but I think there is some possibility of a 
sort of runaround. And this owner and this architect have showed a lot of good faith and actually at every turn provided more information about the condition and the original features. But um, I do think it's, I don't know, I worry a little that it opens Pandora's box. I think I'd be more comfortable with something like a condition that a sample of the proposed material be reviewed by the, the staff plan or something like that. Um, because we're talking about a big expanse of material and to be able to look at some sample of it um, might, uh, you know, give one one last chance for some kind of monitoring or review before the whole thing is approved. And really just based on color, not on material or color and reflectivity. Right. I, do, I don't I do know do if that's like feasible. Is that feasible, Sarah, something like that? I mean, if the, if the commission really doesn't find this metal roof to be compatible with the district, um, mm -hmm. I, it might be a better option to consider a certificate of hardship and be very, very clear about the reasons for doing that in this instance and this instance only. And if I can say one thing about seeing a sample, as you might suspect, a piece of metal roofing looks really different when it's on the ground propped against something than it does. I know from this from personal experience than it does when it's up on your roof mm -hmm. um, and there's some sun on, you know, different things. It's, it, it really can look different. Um, so that's just, you may think it's giving you some control over the color, but not as much as you might suspect. No, I'll just also add, I, um, I really go back and forth on this one because I think the roof that's there now is pretty hideous and it's been there a long time. It's very big. It's a terrible color. Um, it, it clashes with the building, the rest of the building. Um, and I, I guess I'm having a little uh, less trouble with the metal because I think that it does introduce some texture to the building. It allows uh, um, the owner's architect to tone and tone that horrible red color down. Um, so I am, I think I'm more mixed about this and it is reversible, although not easily reversible, but it is a reversible action. I'd like to go, I think with the certificate of hardship, as long as it's documented appropriately. We have a motion on the floor, right? Yes. Well, I yes. just modified it a bit. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Wait, doesn't that require, because I think we should vote on the original motion. I think based well, on- I'd like Well, I'd like to modify it to include the certificate of hardship and, and appropriate documentation. Is that, is that okay? Uh, that's, that's pretty far from the original motion. Yeah, the original motion that's was it. to accept yeah, it. The so perhaps the we should vote on the original motion. motion. to approve, right? Yeah, yes. just, just to approve, okay. up or down. Up or down, let's do it. Okay. But, uh, so I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm taking it that we're gonna make another motion afterwards. It might, we're gonna make another motion for hardship. Is that what we're gonna do? If this doesn't pass. If this doesn't pass. Okay. Uh, Martha? Um, I vote to uh, not accept it as proposed. Okay. Uh, Steve? Yes. Barbara? No. Jonathan? Yes. Craig? No. And Harvey? No. Uh, Four to two motion fail. <laughs> so we need would, to have another motion or? I would make a motion to approve it for hardship. Okay. I'll second that. And my only, um, again, it, it, what I'd like to see is just a little bit more of an effort made to really try to, um, you know, pick a color that's going to closely <laughs> reflect the, um, the weathered copper, and I would leave it to the um, staff, planning staff to approve that. That's not me. And um, did anyone want to add specifically what the hardship in this instance? So it's a hard certificate of hardship can be instanced if 
issued if owing to conditions, especially affecting the buildings or structures involved, but not affecting the district generally. Um, failure to approve an application will involve a substantial hardship financial or otherwise. I think it's a it's a pretty substantial hardship. Um, you know, basically the um, parishioner is donating his materials and uh, to do this. Um, it would, the cost would be significantly higher if he were to go with something else. Um, the roof likely will not last as long if he goes with something else, maybe not quite as long as the metal. Um, and again, I, I don't know whether this is appropriate or not, but I think that we have to recognize the attempts of this organization to try to save the structure. Yeah. I feel really strongly about that. I, if I can just interject that the, the church upon receipt of the, the building spent in excess of 50,000 just to remove the mold from the basement, mm -hmm. um, and just to remove material so that they could try to occupy the building and right. subsequently uncovered more damage as they've progressed mm -hmm. and have attained a stabilization of the building at, at no small expense. Uh, they are also trying to preserve some liquidity so that they can install a lift that they have framed the, uh, the, the hoistway for so that they can access the basement, which is, was somewhat finished, although uh, in horrible shape. But mm -hmm. they, they have uh, remedied that so that the full building could be put back into use by the congregation. So. Yeah. They're, they're making some commitments. Not all things can happen at this instance, but they are doing the work to try to uh, reclaim the usefulness of the, of the building at this point. Yes, and you know this is a building that was neglected by the previous owner for a number of years, so. Okay, I think, do we have a clear um, motion? An understanding of the certificate of hardship. Sarah, do you have everything you need? Yes. Okay, so then we should vote. All right, uh, Martha? Yes. Steve? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Craig? Yes. And Harvey? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. Mr. Shuttle, thank you so much for your um, attention to all of our questions and your efforts to bring this along and your responsiveness is very, very helpful and encouraging. And I, I will do diligence to uh, get the uh, requested materials together for the window uh, handling okay. uh, right. and get that to Sarah as quickly as possible, hopefully beating the deadline that we have. Um, and I apologize for the the church who th thought very glibly that they could pull all their numbers together in a timely fashion and uh, found it a little more complicated than they had hoped. But thank you. You're welcome to stick around. We have one other item on our agenda tonight. Well, thank you very much. I, okay. I, I'm glad I can report in such a, a positive way to the church to mobilize. And, and I might add that before the final material selection on the roof is, uh, before quantities are purchased, I would certainly try to get uh, samples uh, before the, the commission so that they could see the uh, material in place. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. And Steve, I know you're going to be exiting soon. Um, yeah, I need, I need to get going. Um, okay. So I will say goodbye and thanks everyone and all right, we'll see you in november well it is november yeah. see you at the end of the month have a good okay. thanksgiving all right you too bye everyone all right um the other item is something that we um had intended to review at the last meeting and we couldn't um we ran out of time and this is a section 106 review of the complete streets um project on main street and i don't know if you retained all the information that um, was given to us at the last meeting but there was a letter from Tool Design, who are the designers of these improvements. Um, and 
uh, my understanding of this, Sarah, you're probably gonna have to correct me, is that, um, well, maybe you should explain the chapter 106 because I know we have new people and I know we've talked about this before, but go ahead. Sure, uh, so uh, this is a review under chapter section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act. And that requires federal agencies to consider the effects of federally uh, projects that require either federal funding or federal permits on historic properties. And here that's federal highway funding that's going through MassDOT. Um, and uh, federal agencies do this by consulting with state historic preservation offices. And as part of these reviews, local commissions can also review the work and provide advisory comment only, in this case to Mass Historic, if it could potentially negatively impact uh, anything that's listed on or eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. And all of Main Street um, within the project area is located on the National Register. And just sort of uh, for information, Sarah, um, is the Central Business Architecture District reviewing, a committee reviewing this? Uh, it is not because um, not at least not at this point, there are no changes proposed to any buildings. This is a okay. street Got it. project only. So it's a streetscape. Yeah, so um, I don't know if uh, uh, you've had a chance to look at these drawings. I did look at them. Um, I had a couple of questions about them. Um, you know, the changes, I guess there's been so much press about this and I was anticipating more drastic changes and I presume some of the other proposals were more drastic, um, but it seems like it's a largely consisting of um, sidewalk widening and bump outs, which are at the crosswalk areas and then painting of bike lanes. Um, and so um, one of the questions I had was, um, I know there's a lot of paint in these projects that goes that go onto the streets and I just wonder, you know, paint doesn't last that long. And are there any provisions that um, will make sure that the paint gets refreshed once in a while? Um, I have no idea about that. I think Martha also one of the, I don't, I haven't been following this as the, the latest changes or proposals, but I believe it's um, two, one travel lane in each direction with a center third lane, central third lane. Is that still the proposal, Sarah? Is that? Uh, so the, it, it's been changing, but the, oh. the sheets that I provided for the last meeting would be hot off the press latest updates. Oh, okay. I didn't look at them again before uh, today. Let me, let me just grab them. But yeah, so there it's well, Sarah's getting this up on the screen. Um, oh, thank you. Some of them have one travel lane. Um, it depends on the intersection, and others there are three, you know, straight ahead, left, and right turn lanes. Um, it varies depending on the portion of Main Street that we're talking about. And The, I mean, from a designer's point of view, the, the, there are two things about the, these projects that bother me. One is the busyness of them. Um, you know, that's a, it's a, downtown is a very bustling, busy uh, place anyway. And then you start bringing in all this paint and these lanes and, um, and then you inevitably have to put up a lot more signs because people don't understand it. And so that I just, from a, um, just a aesthetics point of view, I have, I have trouble with them in general. Um, but I think in terms of um, the, you know, the, the alignment of Main Street is not being changed. So it's not like they're straightening out the road or putting in new curbs. Um, they're just changing the width of it, uh, but it does become a lot busier. And, you know, the other thing too, is that Main Street um, over, over the years has not always been the same. Um, if you look at the really old maps of Northampton, it, it looked a lot different. So changes are not, um, I don't think the layering of, with the layering of history that's gone in here, I don't think that changes are totally out of, in, totally inappropriate from a historic preservation point of view. Um, I, I need some clarification here. Mm -hmm. well, I know this has gotten a lot of publicity and all that. What are we, bottom line, what are we, what are we being asked to do? To approve or disapprove, or what, what are uh, we being asked to do? So we're often we're being asked for comments that would then get relayed back to the Mass Historical Commission. Comments, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So my question would be about, you know, how often does this paint get refreshed? Are there signs that are going to be put up all over the place? Um, it looks like there's a lot of street tree planting. Is that going to um, actually be executed? Looks like there are trees in the bump outs. Um, you know, how much more detail is going into this that we're not seeing? But th those are mine. Does anybody else have any other thoughts? And, and Martha, I just have a question, or maybe this is for Sarah also, the, the, the bike lanes, which are kind of aren't seeing this, are they, are they going to be painted or just have like an arrow that has a stencil of a bicycle every once in a while, maybe in a color, but as opposed to the whole lane? Because I, I think I agree with Martha that too much color, you know, it's hard to, to say what this is showing. I, um, I, I guess don't know. For sure. Maybe they're actually in blue. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to tell, but I think yeah, I it's don't. like the, the, the third lane continuous has, isn't what's happening. They're just like some cobbled areas once in a while, maybe where, you know, a park, a truck could park to unload or something. And it still maintains some of that angle park. <laughs> they didn't provide a key on this drawing. So I had a lot yeah, of trouble. Yeah, that's why I'm well. a little confused. Yeah. And and I think if the if it's true that the blue is the cycle track or the you know the bike lane, um, I think that's what is it, it actually is. going over the sidewalks? That's kind of the way it looks, which I think is I don't I, know. It was my understanding they were dedicated bike lanes but maybe not everywhere like we're looking at state i think maybe more in the center mm -hmm. of, like if you're seeing now what crackle barrel we look sort of from city hall down center mm -hmm. street you can see they're they're separate they're not on the sidewalks mm -hmm. yeah but i don't know what the blue line is versus the green do, do you know like Sarah, a tree belt. The, it... oh that's the tree belt okay that's the way it looks. Yeah, the dark green i believe is sidewalks and the no. Sort of lighter green, blue is the, the cycle green. Okay. But I, I don't know what the, the color no, th that is intended to be. At this I point. think Martha's right that that's the tree belt because I seem to recall there was a separation between the bicycle lanes and where people would be walking on the sidewalks. So I'm pretty sure that's a tree belt, the green. And then the sidewalks um, yeah. are just white. The sidewalks are, are not with a color on them, mm. I think, but I could be wrong. No, I think yeah, you're right about that. They, uh, this was developed sort of on the fly at a community meeting and was the very latest hot off the press version. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so they didn't have anything with, that was a little more formal to present, but they, okay. they did want to get the most up-to-date information to you. Right. Hmm. Okay. It looks like the bike lane is inside the car, the parked cars. Mm-hmm. Quite attractive to me. Yeah, I mean, this is. Yeah. Um, I think it. It's interesting. It's an interesting way of looking at bicycling because it's more. Um, uh, it looks well. Let me put it this way: people who ride road bikes will not like this, <laughs> and I'm sure they've come out and um, talked about that. But that's not what we're here for. Um, we're here for making any comments we have from a historic preservation point of view. You know, do you think that, do you believe that it's um, in, it is detracting from the historic character of downtown? Um, it's, you know, um, um, compromising its historical integrity. Any thoughts about that? It certainly is different from, it's a lot busier than what we have now. Well, let me say a couple of things about this. What I see about this, I, I think it is calls back to the time when, when Main Street was, was more thriving in terms of the ambiance, the trees, I like that. I like the idea that there's more thought towards the bicycling aspect here. But I've, I've been following this and I wrote an op-ed piece in the paper how what's really missing here is where they're going to put I don't know, 500, 800,000 extra bicyclists per year coming into town. This is, this is actually at the intersection of the, the western end of the longest rail to trail project in the Northeast. Right, they said that in their letter. 
Yeah. Yes. This is very important. This is there's there's going to have to be some thought towards uh, implementing bike corrals, several of them, many of them on weekends and good weather months. This is this is bigger than anybody can ever imagine. In fact, uh, this this trail will be done in five years. I'm going to have to create a, a big organization this winter to help expedite capital capital campaign on this. I think bikes that are being parked here are missing, and I think that's my most important comment here is to have some thought going into where all these extra bikes are going to be. I mean, the, the train, which is the train station just a block away, they're planning on having big bike capacity on every one of those trains. Where are they going to go? So I just I think it should be a community conversation. Okay. Well, I think, um, you know, as all of you know, there have been a lot of, um, or, or several um, public forums around this uh, redesign. And it, it's something that you're, you know, you feel um, more compelled to get involved with outside of the historical commission um, venue, then you should, you should definitely weigh in. Um, but I think, again, going back to our original charge here, which is to look at how, if, at all, this affects the historic character of the downtown. If we have any concerns about that, we need to let Mass Historical know about that, so that they can, you know, move forward to, for the one or six review process. Well, there's no doubt that there'll be a change in the, but it, you know, it's going to take time in the the change in the aesthetics of the streets. Um, but you plant a tree and we're not going to see this big canopy for at least 10 years or so, even after there, the plants are installed. But I think you know, what you pointed out that the, they're not changing the contour of the street. Um, I, I don't know that we can make a, um, a case that it really changes the historical character. You know, it's gone through changes over the years, you know, storefront looks change. Um, the style of sidewalks change. They've put in, you know, this deter now deteriorating brick brick belt, you know, in the sidewalk brick section, um, which changed things. Um, so I don't think we can make a case that there's there's a negative impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? That's very well stated, Barbara. Thank you. Harvey, agree. Anybody else? And Craig, you've mentioned. How about you, Jonathan? Any thoughts about this? No, not really. Okay. Um, yeah, so Sarah, is that is that enough information? We don't have to make a vote on that, take a vote on this, but do you feel like you have enough information to give MHC? Um, you know, essentially we don't see a negative impact on the historic character of downtown, um, that downtown's gone through a lot of iterations over the time, the streetscape especially. Um, you know, we may have, as commissioners, we may have other um, reservations about it that don't really involve the historical commission. Sure. And we would take those to a different forum. How okay. about making no comment at all? Uh, sometimes it's useful, especially for a uh, potentially contentious project to have it on record that the commission hasn't found anything. Uh, have what on record? Uh, a, a, basically a letter indicating that, no, oh, that, that we think basically that have nothing to say. Uh, so it's a oh. it's an opinion that the commission doesn't think that this will have, have a negative impact on the downtown. OK, district. OK. But yeah. I think having Martha's comments in there would would yeah. could really be useful as um, Mass Historic or other entities are reviewing this. Sure. To, to, to have our reasoning for why we think it's not going to have yeah. a negative impact. Yeah, yeah, OK. OK. And Martha, to answer your questions about the, the painting getting refreshed, uh, the Department of Public Works, because this is a section of roadway that's under control of the city, not Mass EOT, does right. have a, a repainting schedule to which these will be okay. added. Like, um, I know they've just been out fairly recently in the last few weeks doing some painting. Okay, great. All right, that's it. Um, all right, we 
do, is there any other business anyone anyone wanted to bring up before we adjourn till our late late month meeting late in the month meeting and if not i'll accept a motion to close oh, the meeting move to Jonathan? Jen. oh move to Jen. okay great second second everybody yes yes Here, if i can find the here we go <laughs> thank you Craig. Thumbs up. Um, okay great so our next meeting um, is november 27th That's 29th uh four weeks oh sorry i'm looking at the wrong month 29th correct 